Hey everybody, welcome back to the BWC Online Bible Study. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 13 today, and as we wrap up the book of Hebrews, um, there's a lot of great wisdom in Hebrews chapter 13. It's talking about marriage, and it's talking about our confidence in Christ, how we, um, how we look at money, and who we are as church members, and how we follow after Jesus. There's just so much. So if you have time today, it would be a great day to go back and read some for yourself and to really look at what the Word is saying um, and really let it just kind of soak into your heart. So we're going to start with verse 4. It says, Give honor to marriage and remain faithful to one another in marriage. God will surely judge people who are immoral and those who commit adultery. You know, um, earlier today I pulled up and looked back at my son's wedding video um, the, the pastor that spoke over their wedding that, that did their wedding vows had talked about um, had talked about the witnesses that were there to um, not just be spectators at the wedding that, that it was our job to encourage them that it was our job to be the community that surrounds them and lifts them up and I just want to encourage you to do that um, hang out with people who value your marriage hang out with people who um, who lift you up in this in this covenant that you've made before God if you're both Christians and you have both um, come before God and, and made this covenant with one another, times can get really difficult sometimes and, and we can just want to give up. But God has called us to something greater than that. And, and it can be such a blessing when we hold on to God in the difficult times and really see the, um, the blessings that come to pass when we don't give up, when we don't give in. And, um, and how really important it is to know what God's Word says about things because the world has a lot of ideas about how things should be and, and the way that things should go. And, um, and the Word of God may say something different, so it's really important that you understand what the Word says. God cares about our character. We see that here. It says God will surely judge people who are immoral and those who commit adultery. It doesn't mean that you can't be forgiven of your sins by Jesus when you surrender your heart toward God um, but there's a surrender that comes you know we we have to turn our hearts toward God we have to ask for forgiveness and um, and that there's really like he cares about our character he cares about the person that we are and as we follow after him our hearts desire should be um, to be who it is that he's called us to be to care about what he cares about and and our marriage is one of those things that he really does care about it says don't love money but be satisfied with what you have for god has said i will never fail you and i will never abandon you um our love has to be set on jesus money is a tool it's something that that can be a blessing um i was reading a scripture from proverbs the other day that was talking about money um and having money and being a fool um, and having money and being wise and what a blessing that was if, if God's blessed you with something and you have wisdom that comes from God. Um, nothing wrong with having money but there is something wrong with loving the money um, because our love and our heart should be set on Jesus. It says, so we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. So I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? You know, how many people are walking around in a state of anxiety and panic and worry and fear um, because they're afraid um, of what can happen to them in this life? I have had a few moments of panic or anxiety um, just in different situations in my life and how thankful I am that... Um, that I have Jesus to cling to, that that I can turn my heart toward God, that I can surrender um, those feelings of fear and, and anxiety to Him, and that He's there to help, and that He has not given me that spirit of fear, and that I don't have to take it on myself. Um, and if you do struggle with, with anxiety and worry and fear, um, I would um, definitely recommend that you begin to read your Bible. Um, 
it, it's not a it's not a quick fix kind of thing but it's one of those things that gets deeply rooted on the inside of you so that when um, because I do have I have a couple of friends that that really struggle with anxiety and um, and people want to tell them you know to, to just get over it or just stop um, and really it takes some healing from God it takes um, it takes faith to know that no matter what happens to you in this life that you have something to something greater to look forward to and that you have a father who loves you and who cares about you and um, and that just my few little words in this Bible study are not nearly enough to to heal what you've got going on but you have a father in heaven who is definitely a healer and and who can bring that confidence and hope to you so I would encourage you to begin um, to read your word and and to begin to find out who God is and how much he loves you it says remember your leaders who taught you the word of God Think of all the things, all the good things that have come from their lives and follow their example of the example of their faith. You know, how beautiful is it that people that have gone before us and who have lived that life for Jesus, who have stayed strong in their marriage. I think about our pastor and, um, and his wife. They're coming up on their 50th wedding anniversary. And that example that they've set of holding on to one another, that example that they've set of faith, um, you know, they're not perfect people. Nobody's perfect. You know, I think sometimes we get this idea that that the people who are in leadership of the church should be walking on some great cloud of holiness um, and, and never make mistakes and never, never fall and never struggle. But the truth is, is that there are people just like the rest of us. Um, and their example of faith is that they have held on to Jesus through every storm, through through every challenge, through every up and every down, and um, and that we want to set that same example for those who are coming up behind us. That we want to hold on to Jesus in in every every moment, and um, and to set you know like I said to set that example of faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So do not be attracted to strange new ideas. Your strength comes from God's grace, not from rules about food, which do not help those who follow them. You know, that was the, the strange idea that they were struggling with at that time was had to do with their diet and the things that they ate. Um, and I'm sure there were a lot of other things, a lot of other strange ideas. Um, just like we have today. There are so many strange new ideas. As I sat with our, our youth the other night, I let um, I told them to ask me questions, things that they heard from the world that said one thing, um, but you just, in your heart, you feel like it's wrong, but you don't know what the Bible says about it. So I let them ask me questions. What, what do you want to know? What do you want to know about what the Bible says? Because there's so many just crazy, strange ideas floating around out there right now. And we need to know. Now is the time to know what the Word of God says about these things. And um, so we had really great discussion about some things that, that, that they have flying at them at 100 miles an hour and really need to know what does the Bible, what does God say about this? And I'm so thankful to see that they really cared to know what the Bible had to say about it, what God had to say about it. Um, the next section, verses 10 through 14, um, is talking about um, the altar and the priests from the Old Testament. Like they used to have to go outside the city and and make this, the high priest would make the sacrifice and then bring the blood back into the altar. Um, and, and in verse 12, it starts and says, So Jesus died and suffered outside the city gates to make the people holy by means of his own blood. So let us go out to him outside the camp, bear the disgrace that he bore. For this world is not our permanent home, and we look forward to a home yet to come. You know, we got to go outside of our comfort zone. We got to step outside of the walls of our church to be Jesus to the world that surrounds us. And people might not like it. You know, when when we first took this Bible study from going from just people that 
I knew would want to listen to it, to making it accessible to the public, to everyone. You know, you're going outside. I was going outside of my comfort zone. Um, But the truth is, is that people need the message of Jesus. And it doesn't matter what the world has to say about it, that the love that Jesus has to offer them, their soul is more important um, than our own comfort. And so we got to go outside. We got to go outside where Jesus is, and um, and be willing to um, to put ourselves out there. And so then it goes on to say, therefore, let us offer through Jesus a continual sacrifice of praise, proclaiming our allegiance to His name, and do not forget to do good and to share with those in need. These are the sacrifices that please God. You know, it's not just our words or a bumper sticker that we have on our car or a t-shirt that we wear. How are you treating people? How are you showing the love of Jesus to the people who are around you? Um, Do you say be warm and fed or do you actually give to help? Um, We got to be the hands and feet of Jesus. We got to step outside of our comfort zone. Obey your spiritual leaders and do what they say. Their work is to watch over your souls, and they are accountable to God. Give them reason to do this with joy and not sorrow. That would certainly not benefit, be to your benefit. You know, be a good church member. We don't hear a lot of sermons about that. We don't hear a lot of sermons about how to be a good church member. Um, your pastor that is in charge of the flock that, that you're a member of, you know, we have our local church. We have um, the church as a whole, every believer in Christ um, over all time, everywhere, the church as a whole. But then we have the local body of Christ. Um, Don't be um, the one that brings sorrow to the people who are there to um, encourage you. You know, it's like we so many times... Um, in the day we live in, it's so easy just to hop from one place to the other and to never really submit ourselves to a spiritual authority, um, to let someone speak into our lives and maybe give us a word of correction when we need it. And, um, and so, and so it's important. It's important to be a good church member. You know, it's really easy to sit on the sidelines and say, well, if you would just do this and you would just do that, you know, as an employee at a job, you know, everybody's always like against the leadership, you know, because they're so evil and bad and, and they do all these things. But until you're the one that's there making the decisions, until you're the one who, who's placed in that place of authority in that place of leadership and I'm not saying that every leader is wonderful and from the Lord um, but there are so many that are and and that that our job is not to sit on the sidelines and tell them how they could do everything better not to say that our opinions don't matter that um, that our ideas don't matter but that we need to learn how to respect authority and that that we need to be part of the solution instead of part of the problem and and how very important that is it says pray for us and for our con- for our conscience is clear we want to live honorably in everything we do especially pray that i will be able to come back soon now may the god of peace who brought up from the dead our lord jesus the great shepherd of the sheep and ratify the eternal covenant with his blood may he equip you with all you need to do his will may he produce in you the power of jesus christ through the power of jesus christ every good thing that pleases him all glory to him forever amen um really to have the power um, of jesus christ on the inside of us to have what it is that we need Um, to do God's will, to do the things that God has called you to do. It says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, pay attention to what I've written in this brief exhortation. And I want you to know that our brother Timothy has been released from jail. If he comes here soon, I will bring him with me to see you. Greetings to your leaders and all the believers there. 
the believers from Italy, greetings. May God's grace be with you all. And I pray that for you today. May God's grace be with all of you, that he will give you the things that you need to do his will, um, that he will bless you with, with all of the good things, and that through Christ that we can be who it is that God has called us to be. And that's what I want to leave you guys with today um, in the rest of Hebrews chapter 13. Lots and lots of wisdom. So, um, so take care of yourself and I will catch you back again in James chapter one.